everyone and welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to be covering debugging and more specifically I'm going to show you an example problem that I had with simulation and how I went about identifying the problem and solving it. So what I've got here is the eKIPS example robot. Uh, you can download it from the simulation website here. Um, this website is super temporary. Uh, don't go to it for anything other than these two links um, until I find a better place for them. Um, but you can download the robot here. So here I'm using the eKIPS Java program, uh, which is available on my GitHub right here. Uh, right here. Okay, so you can see my robot code is running. I've got some poorly tuned PIDs here. Um, and hopefully, aha, there we go. What the heck just happened? Well, why don't we pause things here and take a look. So it appears as if all of our links in our robot have snapped to the origin. So every link is now at zero, zero, zero in the world and the whole robot is basically exploded. So we're going to walk through the process of figuring out what the heck is causing this and then how to fix it. Since it only happened sporadically and not instantaneously when the model loaded, I didn't think it was an issue with the model. It also never happens when my robot code wasn't running. So if I leave my robot code not running here, we can sit here and move this guy all day and, and nothing bad will happen. So I know it's not my robot model. So since it's not my robot model, it must be my code. This is usually the case. The first thing I'm going to look at with my code is motors. And the reason I suspect motors as opposed to sensors is because when my robot code isn't running, the sensors are still publishing information to their sensor topics. So here we've got a bunch of analog and digital um, sensors. You can see this by typing gctopic-l while your robot's in the world. So all of this is probably not causing the problem. So the only thing left is my motors. So what I want to do is look at the messages that are being sent to my robot on the different motors and see if any of them are suspicious. So the easiest way to do this is with the Eclipse Java Debugger, which is a phenomenal debugger and we're going to go over how to use it um, and how to use it effectively. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit, um, well I'm going to hit debug, but first I need to set a breakpoint somewhere. So when you've just started your, pro your debugging process and you have no idea where the code is, um, a good place to start is just in the first line of robot in it, just set a breakpoint. Um, this just allows you to enter the program with some breakpoint somewhere so the robot code doesn't just run like it normally does. Um, so we'll give it a second here to figure out what's going on. All right, so now we've got this new view here with a whole bunch of new windows, and we'll get to each one of them at some point. Um, but uh, what we're really looking for is um, our program to stop at that robot init line, which is right here. OK, so I've run my debugger. I've got my driver station enabled. And you can see the robot has not yet snapped to the origin. Um, that's because my robot code is technically stopped right now. So this is how debuggers work. They kind of freeze your code in time and allow you to introspect, uh, set breakpoints to stop at various points, and look at the value of current variables. Um, so we're right here at this first line. And what we want to do is we want to set a breakpoint so that every single time a motor sets a value or writes a message or whatnot, we print its value or we check its value or something along those lines. So what we want to do is we need to go to the generic speed controller set method. So we've got a couple tools that will let us do that. Um, most importantly we have the outline over here. So the outline is really useful. It shows um, on the current class here which is robot uh, we have all the different members and then all the different methods. So for example, I could go to my flipper subsystem and it would show me that I have a talent and a servo here. 
So one of the things I want to do is look at talon so that every time I set the speed of this talon, I get to check what's going on with that. So if I hover over talon here and hit Control Shift T, or if I just can hit Control Shift T and type talon, it'll bring me to this little search window and it brings up all the different definitions that I might be asking for here. Notice there's two called talon in the uh, edu wpf first wplj package. One is in the non-simulation and one is in simulation, so of course we want the simulation one. So it's going to open up what looks like the source code for uh, the talon class. So you can see how everything in here works and what we're looking for here is the set method. Uh, in this case this one and you can see oh all it does is call set of impul and you can see if you click on impul that impul here is a sim speed controller so of course we can type in sim speed controller and check out that class so this is getting really deep into the guts of WPILib um, and here's the line we want this is what happens when you set a message it actually sends a gazebo float64 message uh, with your speed in it. So every time we do this, we want to look at the value. So we can create a breakpoint on this line by typing Control Shift B. You can see a little dot here, or you can just double click here. Either's fine. And go to the breakpoints view, and you'll see that something has appeared. So on line 53 of Sim Speed Controller, in the function Set, which takes a double, we want to stop. Now, if I disable this set point, since we really don't need it anymore and I resume our code, it's going to keep running until it runs this line of code. So you can see here in the main thread, we've just reached this line. And I can see if I hover over speed, that it's setting a speed of zero. Now this isn't super useful to us because, well, first of all, we don't know what we're setting, uh, what we're setting to. Oh, no, actually we do. Here we go. So if we hover over pub, which is the publisher, we can see a lot of information, but most importantly, we're publishing on the topic PWM3. So whichever motor in Gazebo is PWM3 just got or is about to get when I continue the message zero. So one strategy would be to keep hitting this, and you can see the variable speed is highlighted in yellow every time it changes. So I've hit play a couple more times, and I've noticed something peculiar. NAN. You may not know what NAN is, but it stands for not a number. So essentially, we're somehow setting the motor to a speed of NAN. This is a problem. You really don't want to do this. Now if I hit step over, one, which will move essentially one line of Java code forward, it's going to run that publish command, and boom, our robot has now snapped to the origin. So by using the Java debugger and being smart about where we set our breakpoints, we were able to determine in just a few minutes the exact cause of our problem. Executing that line of code with NAN as an argument caused the issue. Now, you could go deeper and to figure out why that's the problem, but it's more important to know that that is the problem and you should fix it from this end. Uh, the specifics of why NAN causes that to happen is not really super important. And in fact, I, don't, I myself don't know. Um, but what I do know is that NAN ends up being translated to negative 2,000 force um, to, to that joint, um, which is not, if it's in Newtons, unreasonably high. But anyways, we now know the problem. So we've got NAN. So that's a problem. So we can figure out why it's sending NAN. So if you know anything about Java and doubles and NAN, you know that basically the only way to get NAN from normal math is to divide by zero. So clearly, we have divided by zero somewhere. So I'm going to go briefly into uh, how I can figure out where and why this is a problem. I'm not going to go too deep just because this is actually an unsolved bug currently in WPILib, um, or sorry, in simulation. Um, but I can show you how I figured out what the problem is. So from here, we're going to set more breakpoints and go even deeper into why NAN is being sent to the motor. So we're going to use another cool Eclipse feature, which is call hierarchy, to determine what's calling this function with NAN. Um, 
actually, sorry, not call hierarchy. Um, our, our, our stack, our, our Java stack. Uh, call hierarchy is a different thing. Call hierarchy will let me see uh, where set is being called everywhere in my entire code, um, which is useful, but in this case, we want to see what actually caused it to be NAN. So here at line 54 is where we noticed it was NAN. If we click here, you can see it was called from PID right with NAN. You can see that was called from PID right in the Talon class, also with NAN, which was called from my wrist subclass, which is a, a, a class I actually wrote, sorry, subsystem, wrist subsystem, which was called with NAN, which was called from PID subsystem with NAN, blah, 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 all the way back to PID.calculate which is where PID output, which in this case is my uh, Talon in the uh, wrist class, was given NAN as a PID result. So we can scroll up here and we can look at what result is. So here result is a calculation here. This is our core PID calculation in the PID controller class. Now, I can look at each one of these values and say that's 10, that's negative 0.5, and I can look at all these values and notice that it's impossible, since none of these are NAN, to get NAN from any of these values. So therefore, it must be this function. Because these are all not NAN. And we're, if you add something to NAN, you still get NAN. So we know that calculate feed forward is giving us NAN. Now we can scroll down to that function. And we can look at the code for this. And we can say, well, this is returning NAN. MF is 0. And get set point could be NAN. Or temp could be NAN. So I'm going to take a wild guess here. Or sorry, not a wild guess. I know that this is not a rate controller. So it's not running this code. It's running this code. So I know that since MF isn't NAN and it's returning temp, which is NAN, we know that get delta set point is NAN. So I can go down to get delta set point. Get delta set point. Here is a very simple calculation. It's subtracting two values and dividing by another value. Now this makes me very suspicious. We are dividing by a value. Remember how I said you can get NAN by dividing by zero? So what that probably means is that our set point timer is giving us zero. What I can do is I can go into the set point timer um, by looking at outline, seeing that M set point timer is of type timer. And then I can go ahead and open up timer from simulation. And I can look at the get function for this, which is actually a rather complicated uh, abstraction, but eventually. If you keep following this back, you'll get to the sim timer class, which is the simulation implementation of timer. And you can scroll down to the get function here, and you'll see this little calculation. Now, you don't need to understand what this does, but you can see that if somehow this was 0, this, this subtraction addition here, we'd get 0 divided by 1,000, which gives us 0, and you return 0, and you end up dividing by 0. So what we can do is we can set a checkpoint, or sorry, a breakpoint that asks, you know, is this calculation 0? So go ahead and hit Control shift b You can see, okay, so here's that set point. I'm going to get rid of this one, and I'm going to do what's called a conditional breakpoint. So if you click on conditional here, you can type in some Java code, and it will execute that Java code, and it will break when that Java code returns true. So in this case, we're going to say, and you don't need to write if or anything. You just write get ms clock minus m start time. And of course, this is all you get all of your normal completion here. So I can do any one of these things. Um, so m start. I mean, I'm just going to copy this. So basically, I want to check if this equals zero. So if we stop our code and rerun it,
hopefully what we'll see is our code will break. Oh, ah, uh, I've made a I've made a small error in my conditional code. There we go. And just for clarity. Okay, so if we run it, what we're hoping to see is our code will break because this condition is true. And that would validate our theory that zero is being returned from get time or from the timer.get function. Okay, I've added in a new robot so things will start over. And you can see that the breakpoint or the debugger has broke at this line, indicating that this is true, indicating that we have found our problem. Now, it's my job to worry about fixing this problem, but what you can do is fix it within your own robot code. So recall the root problem here is that whenever a PID controller returns a value, it will occasionally return NAN. So the simple solution here, we switch out of our debugging view, is to go to all of your PID controllers and on use PID output, just make sure the output's not NAN. And there's a nice convenient function called isNAN that you can use. And that should be all you need to do. So if we go ahead and do this for wrist and claw, which are our two subsystems here, we go ahead and rerun our robot. We can see that we are no longer exploding, which is very exciting. So I hope this was a useful video on debugging. There's so much more to do. Um, we've only even covered Java here. You can do the same thing with C++ using a C++ debugger. Um, I recommend the GNU debugger GDB, um, but there are many other options out there. The most important thing to remember when debugging is to keep a cool head so you can think clearly about what the problem is. Never doubt that your code is wrong and always make sure to use breakpoints whenever you can to speed up the process.